continuation of previous lecture on cantilever retaining wall where we will be learning the stability analysis of a given retaining wall of vertical dimensions so as you may recall from the previous uh, lectures which i have given the stability of retaining wall depends on the three failure failures in which it may fail first is overturning sliding and the failure of undersoil so if any of these checks fail the retaining wall can fail the factor of safety of retaining wall for overturning if it is greater than 1.4 if factor of safety for sliding is greater than 1.4 if the maximum soil pressure at toe slab and minimum soil pressure at heel slab are less than safe bearing capacity and are positive then your retaining wall is stable so in the stability analysis of retaining wall we will learn how to perform these apply these checks on a given retaining wall and conclude the analysis of retaining wall whether it is safe or stable or not so we will look into it with the help of examples so the first problem which we have is a cantilever ret retaining wall like this of the given dimensions so first we will look the, at the different dimensions the thickness of the stem is 0.4 meter at top and 0.6 meter at base the length of toe slab is 0.6 meter the length of heel slab is 2.3 meter the total length of base slab is 3.5 meter thickness of the base slab is also given 0.6 meter height of stem is 5 meter and this 1 meter is the depth of the retaining wall or the depth of the base slab below the soil the front soil so these are the different parameters of the retaining wall now we look into the backfill side the backfill is slightly inclined as you may see at an angle of 15 degree like this with the horizontal the density of soil is given 18 kN per meter cube beta is 15 degree its angle of internal friction is 34 degree delta is the angle of friction between soil and wall 25 degree and the safe bearing capacity of the under soil below the base slab here is given as 500 kN per meter square so i hope all the data is uh, clear to you now what we require from this question is we have to check the stability of cantilever this cantilever retaining wall that is we have to check whether it may fail by overturning or sliding or the under soil may fail so what we will do we will first calculate all the forces acting on this retaining wall then we will calculate the moments due to those forces and then we will apply the checks the three checks so this it is very simple there are only three steps calculation of forces calculation of moments and calculation of the and application of the checks for stability so the most important part is the height of it, the backfill here height of back uh, stem is 5 meter the base thickness is 0.6 meter the total height of the retaining wall or the sorry total height of the backfill will be from here to here because it is slightly inclined so we have to take this portion of soil also so how will we will calculate in this particular triangle this angle is 15 degree and this length is 2.3 meter as you can see from below so the vertical side will be from pythagoras theorem or from trigonometry sorry not from pythagoras theorem but from trigonometry tan beta is equal to x upon 2 by 3 perpendicular upon base here we get this as 0.6 meter so the total height of retaining wall of the backfill will be 0.6 plus 5 plus 0.6 that is 6.22 meter so keep these forces in mind we will be using these later on now that we have calculated the lateral earth force lateral active earth force we will calculate the weights also 
uh, you may note here that uh, there is this much earth pre present in the front fill front face so there will be some active earth pre uh, sorry passive earth pressure here but we may ignore this because of its very less value you can also calculate it if you want but the difference will be not much now after calculation of little active earth pressure we will calculate different types of beds so first look at this diagram i will explain to you first here i have divided whole this retaining wall into different weights different uh, areas because while calculation of weight we need to find the areas of different portions so we have i have cal i have divided it into it into definite shapes like triangle or rectangle so first is w1 which is weight of backfill shown here w2 is the weight of triangular portion here the backfill is of this much height so we have i have divided it into two portions this is the triangular and this is the rectangular so w1 is the weight of this portion and w2 is the weight of this portion next weight of stem of retaining wall which is w3 here in stem also i have divided stem into two parts triangular and rectangular so we have w3 and w4 and last we have w5 which is the weight of the base slab so here also you can calculate the weight of this soil also that is which is present in the front face but as it is clear to you by now this is very less so we may neglect it so we calculate these weights one by one so first we start with w1 w1 is a rectangle w1 is acting in a rectangle so what is the area of rectangle uh, length into breadth so this length is 2.3 meter and this height is 5 meter five look at here the rectangle dimensions are 5 meter into 2.3 meter so this is the 2.3 into 5 is the dimension of your is the area of your rectangle and we, as we have to calculate weight we need to multiply it with the unit weight of the material present here which is given in the question as 18 so unit weight into area will give you the total weight acting on the area w1 similarly we calculate w2 w2 being a triangle here the area of triangle is half into base which is base is 2.3 into height 0.6 which is the area this is much is the area and 18 is the unit weight so we get w2 similarly we get w3 w3 is rectangle so 0.4 into 5 into 24 note here 24 is the unit weight of concrete uh, it has been given in the question that is it is a concrete retaining wall so we use 24 as unit weight of concrete w4 is triangular portion half into 0.2 into 5 this is 0.4 and this total was 0.6 so this is 0.4 this is 0.6 this will be 0.4 and this will be 0.2 here written here so i hope you get it w1 w2 w3 w4 w5 is the area of whole base slab weight acting on this whole slab so total length is 3.5 meter Point uh, six plus point two plus point four plus two point three into thickness of this. That is point six. This is the area of this rectangle, and base slab is also of concrete, so twenty four. So we calculate all these weights. Now, after calculation of all the forces, we are done with the calculation of forces. Now we will calculate the moments from all these forces. So what is moment? Moment is basically force. here it is force and if we have to calculate the moment here so force into this perpendicular distance that is the lever arm is known as the moment the moment of this force about this will be in this direction and this value will be f into this perpendicular distance always note this is the perpendicular distance if load is like this and point it is this so the distance of lever arm will be like this so in order to calculate the moments i have tabulated these forces their lever arms and the resulting moments 
like uh, I will show you in you the next slide. So look at this table. Uh, it may look complicated, but it's very easy. This table has been prepared so that there is quite uh, easy uh, ease in calculation of the moments. So as you re may remember, the direction of different types of forces will lead to different types of moments. Like the vertical forces will lead to clockwise and uh, clockwise moments and the horizontal force like this will result in the anti-clockwise moment so we have uh, and these anti-clockwise moments are the overturning and the clockwise moment clockwise moments are the restoring moments so we have to calculate these moments so we will divide these forces into vertical and horizontal and the moments into restoring and overturning whatever the case may be so these are the different forces we have calculated in the previous slide first is weight of backfill w1 then w2 w3 w4 w5 then we have calculated two components of the backfill pressure pah and pv out of these some may cause overturning and some may cause restoring so we will look at it one by one so the weight of backfill was 207 kilo newton you can see check from here this was 2107 kilometer it is a vertical force so i have written it in the column of vertical it is not horizontal therefore i have put a dash here so first of all uh, before calculating moment we need to fix a point where we will calculate the moments of all the forces so either you can take here at the toe end or at the heel end it is up to you i have taken the, all the moments at a point that is the base of your heel it is easier and uh, mostly this heel uh, moments are calculated at heel end only so first look at the force w1 here w1 and here is, it is this is the point a so what is the perpendicular distance between these two uh, points this is the point of action of w1 and this is point a so perpendicular di uh, distance is this so we will calculate this distance now start from here this is 0 0.6 then this total is 0 0.6 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 and as we know this w1 is acting in a rectangular area so the w1 will act at the centroid of this rectangle so as you all know the centroid of rectangle is at a distance of l by 2 which is 2.3 by 2 so here we get all the lever arm 2.3 by 2 sorry here it will be 2.3 by 2 there is a mistake here 2.3 by 2 plus 0.4 plus 0.2 plus 0.6 and you will get the lever arm 2.35 meter so the moment will be 20 uh, force into the lever arm which is 207 into 2.35 here so we get it as 486.5 now you have to decide at this point whether this moment is restoring or it is overturning so if we calculate if we show the direction of this moment this is the point and this is the point so it will the moment will be like this so therefore this is a restoring moment so i have written this value under the column restoring moment so similarly you calculate all these forces um, and moments separately here w2 was 12.8 kN and this is a vertical force so this is a triangle the location of this uh, point that is the w2 weight of this triangular portion will be at the centroid of the triangle which is at a distance of 2 by 3 of b, b whichever whichever this length is and from here it will be one third of b so 2 by 3 of 22.3 and we have to calculate this from a point so 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.4 plus 2 by 3 into 2.3 so we get 2.73 and moment again this moment will be restoring so similarly 
similarly we will calculate the lever arms of different forces uh, like we did in the um, for w1 and w2 according to the shape of whichever we are considering and it's the fourth location of the force like for w4 the location of w4 is at centroid of this triangle that is at a distance of 2 by 3 of this total length this is the triangle which ha is having this base as 0.2 meter so the w4 will act at 2.3 into 2.2 and its distance from a is 0.6 plus 2 by 3 into 0.2 so here like i have written like this for w3 it will be 0.6 plus 0.2 plus the this is a rectangle so this w3 will act at a distance of 0.4 by 2 so this so in this uh, like this we will calculate all lever arms and all the restoring moments as these all are vertical downward weights so all these moments will be restoring so i have tabulated it in the restoring part also here you can put dash because there is no overturning moment here now let's go to the other two types of forces which were the lateral earth pressure forces components now uh, the inclined PA force had one vertical component which was acting here so as this is a vertical force and we have cal to calculate the here uh, the moment at this point so the perpendicular distance between these two will be the total length of the base slab that is 3.5 meters so here I have written 3.5 and the moment as 28 into 3.598 this will be as uh, this is PAV is a vertical downward force so the moment will be restoring here now the last type of force is PAH PAH is this force so the point of action is here and where does this force act we know this is having a triangular distribution this is having a triangular distribution this load is having triangular distribution distribution so PAH will act at a distance of H by 3 which is the centroid of this of this triangle so the perpendicular distance between this horizontal force and this point A this force is like this and the point is this so we will uh, the lever arm will be the perpendicular distance what is this this is h by 3 and h is 6.22 so we get 6.22 by 3 so this is the horizontal force so I have written it in horizontal force column and this is overturning moment because the moment from this point to this point will act in this way hence it is overturning moment so we get it the value as 216.5 so the table is complete now we just have to add all these vertical forces all these horizontal forces and the restoring moments and the overturning moments so i have written these sigma v is the summation of vertical forces sum summation h horizontal forces this is only one type of force here summation mr are the restoring moments acting in the anti sorry clockwise direction and the overturning moments acting in the counterclockwise direction so we calculate get all these value which we which we require for the stability checks so now the uh, difficult part is over we just need to apply stability checks first is the check for stability for overturning for a retaining wall to be safe against overturning the factor of safety should be greater than 1.4 and the factor of safety for overturning is 0 0.9 into summation of restoring moment upon summation of the overturning moment so summation of uh, restoring moment is 764.5 and m0 is 216.5 and 0.9 is the factor for dead load so we get it as, as 3.17 which is quite larger than 1.4 hence retaining ball is safe for overturning so your first check is safe now sliding the retaining ball is safe against sliding when the frictional force is greater than the sliding force and its factor of safety is greater than 
so similarly factor of safety for sliding will have frictional force upon the sliding force so what are the frictional forces friction uh, this is a, a retaining wall so the sliding force is the one which is trying to slide the retaining wall in this direction and the refrictional force which is the restoring force should be like this so the what are the frictional forces which that are mu into summation of all into summation of all the vertical forces and what are the frictional forces these are the horizontal forces which are acting on your retaining wall so we have already calculated sigma v and sigma h like right, in uh, earlier so what is coefficient of friction as you have been given value of delta which is the angle of friction between wall and soil so it will be tan 25 mu is tan into delta tan 25.47 so we take here mu is equal to 0.47 sigma v as 358 and sigma h as 104.6 and we get the value of factor of sliding as 1.45 which is more than 1.4 hence safe now last is the check for stability of under soil here we need to calculate p maximum p maximum is if this is the base slab of your retaining wall p maximum is the soil pressure acting on the toe and p minimum is the soil pressure acting on the heel portion so p maximum is sigma v by b 1 plus 6 e by b and p minimum is 1 minus 6 e by b b here is the base width of your base slab now e is b by e is the eccentricity which is b minus 2 minus x bar where x bar is summation restoring moment minus summation of overturning moment upon summation of all the vertical forces so we all know these four, uh, values we calculate the value of x bar then we calculate the value of e we substitute these in p the, this these two expressions and we calculate the value of p max and p minimum for safety the value of p max must come out to be less than the soil bearing capacity which was given as 500 so 141 is less than 500 hence your check is okay and for safety p minimum should be greater than 0 that is it must be positive hence your check is also so this retaining wall is completely safe against overturning against sliding as well as under soil is also stable so i hope uh, the st uh, stability analysis is clear to you uh, when we do the design course part also design question also you will have to do this part because while you decide when you decide the dimensions of retaining wall once you fix those you will have to check whether the dimensions you have assumed are correct or not for that you have to repeat this portion in the design part also so i uh, make sure you understand it here so that you don't have problem later on let us look at another problem for better understanding this is a retaining wall almost similar to that in the previous question with slightly uh, one or two differences first of all in the previous question the retaining wall was like this the backfill was backfill wall uh, backside wall was vertical and the front wall was height slightly sloped here it is opposite the back side of wall is slightly sloped and the front is like this and another difference is which is the most important difference that is the presence of surcharge load on the retaining wall we have discussed this case also uh, earlier in the previous lectures that due to the presence of surcharge load the whatever earth pressure we are calculating that will increase due to this surcharge load so we will learn how to calculate uh, these all here so as done in the previous question uh, we we will calculate all the forces the pressure pressure due to the surcharge load all the weights and then we will calculate the moments and then apply the different checks so here the stem has thickness at top 0.5 meter at bottom 1 meter so here it will be like this 
this is 0 0.4 and uh, 0 0.5 sorry this is 1 so this will be 0 0.5 this will be 0 0.5 the length of toe slab is 1 meter the total length of your base slab is 5 meter so the remaining is that is the length of heel slab will come out to be 3 meter the depth of or thickness of your base slab is 1 meter and the base slab is directly uh, at the level of the soil here the height of stem is 7 meter so the total height of backfill will be 8 meter as this is not an inclined backfill you don't need to calculate uh, make other calculations so this total height will come out to be 8 meter the soil bearing capacity is 300 kilonewton per meter square so let us begin with the solution so first of all we will calculate the lateral earth pressure or lateral earth force to calculate the lateral earth force we you have to recall that as there is surcharge load the surcharge load will have additional pressure on your retaining wall so how do we calculate this for this we will make the pressure diagram as I have made here by uh, following the steps so this is the point A of your retaining wall and this is the point B of the topmost point and the bottommost point so in the previous case when there is no surcharge load the pressure at point A is zero because there is no soil or anything above but here as there is surcharge load here the pressure at point A cannot be zero there has to be some value for that so first we will calculate that value so at point A that is at depth equal to zero meter that is at the backfill level PA will be Q into K I have explained it to you in the first lecture that when there is a surcharge load additional pressure acts which is equal to Q into K A where Q is the value of the load given uh, it is given to us in question as I think uh, yes it is 30 kilonewton per meter square so this is 30 now Ka will be as this is a horizontal backfill so Ka will be 1 minus sin phi upon 1 plus sin phi uh, you have you can refer to the previous lectures how we have get this got this value so Pa will be Q into Ka that is Q 30 and Ka 0 0.33 so we get 10 kN per meter square so we will uh, okay we will draw this later on now at point B that is at the top bottom most portion of this retaining wall at a height at a depth of 8 meter what is happening obviously in at height B pressure from above will also act that is pressure from A of A will act plus additionally another pressure will act here of this particular portion so this was the pressure uh, 10 kN per meter square in addition to this another pressure will act due to this particular soil so what is this pressure we all know from before this pressure is acting at this point will be k into gamma into h so so pressure at b that is the bottom of the base slab will be pa from above acting from above plus ka gamma into h PA is Q into KA as calculated here so directly we can write at 10 or you can so calculate later uh, again also Q into KA plus KA gamma H Q is 30 KA is 0.3 this is also 0.3 gamma is 18 and H is 8 meter so we calculate we get the value of PB 4058 we can get the value of PA as 10 so how do we make this diagram I'll show you here <coughs> sorry so this is point A this is the retaining wall uh, this is point A here the pressure value is 10 so we draw a line 10 at B the pressure is 58 as calculated here now we will join these two and we will get this particular figure so for uh, battery calculation we will divide it into two areas so this total value at base is 58 this value is 10 so this will also be 10 and this will be 58 minus 10 that is 48 
so I have written this all here also so this is the pressure diagram for your detaining ball so uh, in this portion uh, there will be two we will divide this uh, into two types of forces PA1 and PA2 where PA1 is the lateral earth pressure due to surcharge load which is a rectangular portion and PA2 is the lateral earth pressure due to the backfill which is the triangular portion as pre in previous question in previous question we didn't have this rectangular portion we just had this rectang uh, triangular portion so what will be the value of PA1 PA1 will be this is the diagram I have shown here again this is 10 so what and this is PA1 so what will be the value of PA1 Q into KA into H that is the pressure acting at this point at this area that is 10 into height so we get so basically this is the area of this particular this rectangle this is 10 and this is 8 so 10 into 8 we get 80 PA2 will be area of this triangle half into base base is 48 58 minus 10 the, this length we got at 50, uh, 48 kilonewton meter square so half into 48 into 8 here I have explained how we get 48 so PA2 is 192 kilonewton so now we have got two values of little earth pressure PA1 and PA2 now we will calculate the weights so I will uh, not repeat the weights portion because you know how to calculate the weights just I will uh, do it quickly W1 is the weight of rectangular portion of stem, W2 triangular portion of stem, W3 weight of base slab, W4 is the triangular part of your backfill because this portion is somewhat inclined so this is the whole backfill so I have divided the backfill into two portions triangular and rectangular W4 is the weight of triangular portion of backfill, W5 is the weight of rectangular portion of backfill so as uh, we have done earlier we calculate the forces here I have calculated all the forces in this tabular form we get these values we substitute we bifurcate into vertical and horizontal similarly we have got PA1 and PA2 both these are horizontal forces then we calculate the lever arms of each force uh, I will give you one I will explain one example for W4 what will be the lever arm this is the point O from where we are calculating the moment so this particular distance will be the lever arm and what will be this 1 meter plus 1 meter plus this triangle has base of 0.5 and the location of this point will be 2 by a third of the 0.5 so 1 plus 0 0.5 plus 2 by 3 into 0.5 we get 1.83 and then we get the resulting moments so all the weights will give restoring moments and both these PA1 and PA2 are horizontal forces like this so th both these will give such overturning moments and all the weights will give the restoring moments so I have bifurcated them here then we calculate sigma V, sigma H, sig sigma MR and sigma M0 now we will move to the check for stability Factor of safety of overturning is the restoring moment upon the overturning moment. So we get it as 2 which is greater than 1.4 hence safe against overturning. Now we look at the sliding. Sliding factor of safety is the vertical sorry the restoring force or frictional force divided by the sliding force. Restoring force is mu into submission w and the uh, sliding force is the PA1 and PA2 that is submission H so we get factor of safety as 1.08 so what do we have the value should be greater than 1.4 but it is coming out to be less than 1.4 hence it is unsafe so we will have to provide a shear key here I have explained how to provide shear key in the next slide so before that uh, we will check the third case also under soil stability we calculate p max and p minimum as explained before and here the uh, bearing capacity was 300 and p max is 278 so safe 
but p minimum is coming out to be negative hence unsafe so there is some problem in this retaining wall so we will uh, may have to change the dimensions but as this is not a design question we cannot change the dimensions what we can do is we can provide another portion another part to this particular retaining wall that is the shear key so what is the shear key it is the protruded part below the base slab provided below the base slab of retaining wall extended portion of retaining wall to increase the restoring force the sliding force uh, why does the factor of safety is coming out to be less because the sliding force is dominating the restoring force so what we do we increase the restoring force also by providing a shear key so how do we design shear key for that we will consider the passive lateral earth pressure acting on the uh, on the front face of the uh, of the retaining wall so this is the uh, some portion of retaining wall this was the front portion here the base slab starts and here there is the back uh, front fill so what we will do is we will have to find out the value of d like how deep the shear key must be provided so that the factor of safety comes out to be okay so what we will do first of all we will calculate the passive earth pressure because as this is acting on the front face there will be passive pr earth pressure mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. so we calculate the passive earth pressure and that will be added to the restoring force so how we do that so at the look at th this is the shear key at the top of shear key but what is the uh, pressure acting of soil it is calculated in the same way as we do did yes uh, it did before so what is the pressure acting at this point like this point that is the pressure of this soil so what is that kp into gamma into h dash here we are using kp not ka because this is passive so passive earth pressure is 1 plus sin phi upon 1 minus sin phi and that is giving out to be 3.25 so at this point we get the value of pressure as kp gamma into h which is coming out to be 65 now at B point we will have additional earth pressure due to this uh, backfill present here. Here there, there will be soil here also. So that will be Kp into gamma into D. That is D is the depth of the this that is the depth of this portion. So Kp into gamma into D plus Kp into gamma into H. So we get this equation. We have uh, one unknown here that is D. So how do we use this particular uh, passive earth pressure? The passive earth pressure acting at this base of uh, your shear key. Now we will calculate the passive earth force. So as done previously we divide this portion. Uh, I will draw how we get this diagram. This is point A, the top of shear key. So what about the pressure here? It was 65. And what for the pressure at B dash that is at the bottom of shear key it was 65 plus 65 D. So we join this and we get this diagram and we divide it into one rectangle and one triangle. So if this is 65 this will be 65 and this will be 65 D. So we calculate PP1 and PP2 as we did before. So PP1 will be area of this portion that is this is 65 and uh, this is 65 and this length is d so 65 into d and area of this triangle will be half into 65 d into d so we calculate total pressure as pp now what is the purpose of this pp this pp or passive earth pressure will be added to the restoring force earlier we were using restoring force as only the frictional force which was mu into summation w now we will add this pp here now we know that for safety the factor of uh, safety must be greater than or equal to 1.4 so we put here 1.4 and here 0.9 will be also there as explained earlier so we substitute all these values pp we get from here which is in terms of d this is the 
frictional force we do all the calculations in and we get d so we get the final equation as d for safety the d d is the depth of the shear key should be greater than and or equal to 0.978 therefore we provide a shear key of depth 1 meter below your retaining wall so this is how you proceed if the there is a some error or some unsafety in your retaining wall so this is the design of shear key also here so i hope now the concept of stability of the retaining wall is clear to you we will be using it the same concept while designing the retaining wall also now start with the solution so the total height of the back film which this retaining wall has to uh, re uh, retain is 6.22 meter and the angle of inclination of the back film is 15 degree first step is the calculation of different types of forces acting on this retaining wall which we have studied in the previous lecture so what are those different type of forces the lateral earth pressure acting on the retaining wall and all the weights acting on the retaining wall so here first of all we will start with the calculation of lateral active lateral active pressure that is lateral active force pa as the back wheel is inclined this force will be also inclined as shown here so first of all uh, as it is clear to you the lateral earth pressure will be triangular with the base pressure is ka gamma h we have studied this how this ka gamma h comes so the pa that is the force acting will be the area of this triangle half into base into height half into ka gamma h into height which is 6.22 meter so before this we need to uh, gamma is the density of soil h is the height of backfill and ka is the coefficient of active earth pressure which we will have to calculate first you can use any of the theories suitable to you uh, that is rinkins or coulomb's wedge theory here i have taken the rinkins theory so for uh, um, rinkins theory in the rinkins theory the formula for ka is cos beta cos beta minus cos square beta minus cos square phi under root upon cos beta plus under root cos square beta minus cos square phi where beta is the angle of inclination of the inclined back fill and phi is the angle of internal friction of the soil so we substitute these values 15 degree and 34 degree and we get the value of 0.311 as ka now we calculate pa pa is half ka gamma h square we put all these values and we get the value h is 6.22 gamma is 18 ka is 0.311 and we get the force pa 108.29 as you all know this type this force is inclined so we will uh, bifurcate it into two components horizontal and vertical horizontal will be cos pa into cos beta and p v will be pa into sin beta so we calculate them separately because we have studied earlier the action and behavior of both these forces will be different on this retaining wall 